While everyone is distracted by the current thing, central banks around the world have been rushing to roll out their CBDCs. They've made a lot of progress over the last few months. And in some countries, it looks like these dystopian digital currencies are about to launch. That's why today we're going to explain what CBDCs are, give you an update about CBDC developments around the world, and reveal which countries are resisting this terrifying trend. Central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, are digital currencies created by central banks. At a first glance, this sounds benign. After all, most currencies are already digital, right? Well, not exactly. If you listen to what central bankers have been saying about CBDCs, you'll quickly realize they're not just digital currencies. You see, although most currencies are already digital, you have the freedom to do what you want with your money, for the most part. You can buy whatever you want, whenever you want, assuming that you have the money, and you don't have to worry about your savings being frozen. That is, of course, unless you're protesting against the Canadian government, but that's a topic for another time. Now, the relative freedom that you have with digital currencies today is ultimately a consequence of the fact that if your bank was to block your transactions or freeze your savings, you would probably go and find another bank. In other words, you have the ability to choose. You have the freedom to opt out. With a CBDC, however, it will not be possible to opt out. That's because with a CBDC, all your money will be stored directly at the central bank. And well, there's only one central bank. This centralization makes it possible for central banks and the government to control all of the transactions in the economy. Put it simply, in a CBDC system, what you can do with your money will fundamentally be determined by the central bank and the government. If this sounds terrifying, that's because it is. It would mean the end to financial freedom. That is actual financial freedom. The ability to decide what to do with your money. Don't believe me? Well, consider this. The now infamous quote from Augustin Cartesens, the general manager of the Bank for International Settlements, or BIS, the so-called Bank for Central Banks. He states, a key difference with the CBDC is that the central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of the expression of central bank liability. And also, we will have the technology to enforce that. Translation, we control your transactions, not you. And if you think that you can opt out by using cash or gold, think again. If you watched our first video about the EU digital euro, you'll recall that the ECB explicitly stated that the digital euro would replace cash and even implied that the digital euro would have the potential to replace stores of value like gold. And it's not just the ECB either. According to the BIS, over 90% of central banks are in the process of rolling out CBDCs, and some have rolled them out already. This is despite the fact that the BIS own research found that the voluntary adoption of CBDCs by citizens is only between 4 and 12%. As we've seen with the rollouts of some CBDCs, however, the actual adoption rate seems to be even lower. If you watched our video about Nigeria, you'll know that only 0.5% of the population adopted its e naira CBDC after one year. The government went as far as to trying to restrict cash use to increase its adoption. And guess what? It worked. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to smash that like button to help others find it. Now this brings me to the CBDC updates that we've seen over the last few months. Because this is such an important topic, we've taken the effort to look at CBDC updates in most of the major countries and regions. Note that you can find your country or region using the timestamps in the description. Let's start with North America, namely the United States. In April, North Carolina passed a law banning the use of CBDCs in the state. One month later, Florida followed suit. What's interesting is that these laws seem to have been inspired by the backlash against Fed's FedNow payment system. If you watched our video about FedNow, 
you'll know that it's a precursor to a CBDC system. In plain English, it puts the technology in place for a CBDC rollout, specifically settling regular payments directly at the central bank. Fed officials also admitted in a presentation that FedNow will evolve into a CBDC. For context, FedNow was launched in July and the pushback against it and a CBDC continued for some months. It even got to the point that popular podcasters like Joe Rogan were discussing CBDCs with their guests. Spoiler alert, they are not fans of CBDCs. Nobody who loves freedom is, and that's everyone. That being said, it does appear that Democrat politicians in the United States are in favor of a CBDC. This is something that we've noticed in our analysis of crypto hearings. Democrats have argued that the US needs a CBDC if it wants to stay competitive with countries like China, which are rolling out their own CBDCs. Republicans, on the other hand, have warned about the centralized control aspect of a CBDCs, and many Republican politicians have tried passing anti-CBDC legislations at a federal level. As you might have guessed, Republicans hold a majority in the two states that have banned CBDCs. What's fascinating is that even some members of the Fed have been skeptical of CBDCs. That's because they don't seem to be required, and research by the central bank themselves suggests that CBDCs could pose significant financial stability risks. Never mind the centralized control aspects. If you're wondering when the US could see a CBDC, the answer seems to be not anytime soon. According to a recent report by the Bank of America, a digital dollar may not come for around another three to five years. Now, this is an estimate to remember, given that mega banks like Bank of America technically own the Fed. Now, south of the Rio Grande, there have been lots of CBDC updates out of Latin America, namely in Brazil and Argentina. In May, Visa and Microsoft participated in Brazil's CBDC pilot. This is scary, considering that in July, a developer discovered that Brazil's CBDC contains code to freeze transactions and delete funds. This was discovered because some of the code for Brazil's CBDC was posted on GitHub by the central bank. The developer in question claims to have reverse engineered the CBDC using this code. This sounds unlikely until you realize the CBDC is based on Ethereum and the developer was a crypto developer. Note that Brazil's CBDC is using a private and permission copy of Ethereum, not Ethereum itself. Anyways, the most recent update from Brazil was that the central bank had revealed its name and its logo for the CBDC, and it was called DREX, where the D stands for Distributed Ledger Technology, the R stands for Real, the Brazil's national currency, the E stands for Electronic, and the X stands for Connection. 90s movie references aside, there have been even scarier CBDC updates out of Argentina. Just last month, then-presidential candidate Sergio Masso said that he wants to use CBDCs to solve the country's inflation problem. For reference, Argentina's inflation rate is currently at a whopping 142%. Conversely, Javier Millet, the newly elected president, has promised to abolish Argentina's central bank and replace the national currency with the US dollar. Malay is seen as being pro-crypto, which is a little bit odd given that dollarization would likely reduce Argentina's crypto adoption. Everyone there is using crypto. In any case, it seems that Argentina's central bank is planning on pushing ahead with its CBDC regardless of who's in power. One central bank official already said that they plan to use CBDCs to combat tax evasion. Argentina's central bank should be introducing its CBDC bill in the coming weeks. Note that we'll leave a link to a few tools so you can use to keep track of CBDC developments in your country in the description. 
We interrupt this program for an emergency crypto weather forecast. Get ready for a whirlwind of savings. We're seeing some high pressure sign up bonus systems forming in the Northeast, with some exchanges offering up to $40,000. In the South, we've seen some heavy discounts on hardware wallets, so watch out for those if you're going to be out and about. And then in central areas, there's a high chance of trading fee discounts, which should be settling in later on. So be on the lookout for up to 60% off there. Lush! For a more comprehensive forecast, just visit coinbureau.com slash deals or use the link down in the description. These deals are red hot, so make sure to take all the necessary precautions. Well, that's all for today's forecast. Now back to the scheduled program. Anyway, the next stop on our CBDC world tour is Europe, including Russia which is technically part of Europe, according to the UN. The more you know. Now, as most of you will know, most European countries use a shared currency called the Euro, and there have been lots of digital Euro updates. In April, ECB President Christine Lagarde admitted on camera that the digital Euro would be used for control. If you've been keeping up with our digital Euro updates, you'll know that Christine and the ECB are concerned about a foreign currency replacing the euro in Europe, including the US dollar. From what we've seen, it looks like the Chinese yuan is the currency that the ECB should really be concerned about. That's because some large French banks have reportedly started offering their corporate clients accounts in digital yuan, specifically BNP Paribas. I know, we couldn't believe the headline either. It's even less believable when you consider the fact that France has been pushing the hardest for a digital euro. Spain has also been pushing hard for a digital euro. Slovakia, however, has been pushing back. It passed a law adding cash use to its national constitution back in June. Similar laws are now being floated in the Czech Republic and Austria, the former of which uses its own national currency. As a fun fact, one of the conditions for joining the EU is to adopt the euro, but there's no timeline for when this needs to be done. It's safe to say some countries are taking their sweet time. Other EU countries like Hungary are taking their sweet time developing their own CBDCs too. Back in May, the Hungarian Central Bank said there was no imminent need for a CBDC. However, it sounds like Hungary will be getting one anyway as the digital euro will apparently need to be accepted everywhere. If you watched our most recent digital euro update, you'll know that it could be rolled out as soon as 2025. Between now and then, we're likely to see the rollouts of the EU's digital ID wallet, which will likely be required for a successful CBDC rollout. Note that this will be the case in every country. Meanwhile, in the UK, the Bank of England completed a CBDC study with the BIS, the aforementioned Bank for Central Banks, in June. Later that same month, the Bank of England revealed that it had continued to make progress of CBDC research and development, and its focus on privacy. Now, funnily enough, the Bank of England's public consultation of the digital pound, aka Britcoin, received over 50,000 comments, the majority of which were about privacy concerns. For those that are unfamiliar, CBDCs will not have any privacy. Central banks will be able to see all of your transactions and balances. Based on the information that we could find, the Bank of England will continue to work on Bitcoin until 2025 or 2026, at which point a decision will be made whether or not to issue it presumably by UK politicians. If approved, Britcoin will launch sometime in the second half of the decade. So fellow Brits, take notice. Now, Russia's CBDC developments can be described in one word, rushed. In July, its CBDC bill was passed. By August, the central bank had revealed a fee schedule, the logo, and all those bells and whistles. CBDC trials started in August, and it looks like the digital ruble will be live sometime between 2025 and 2027. Russia's rushed CBDC developments is not so surprising, given the unprecedented sanctions the country has been facing. This has put extreme pressure on the ruble, 
and has forced the central bank to engage in strict capital controls. Obviously, capital controls will be a lot easier to impose with a CBDC. Another country that's known for its capital controls is China, and it's one of the many countries in Asia that have seen significant CBDC updates over the last few months. China has been testing its digital yuan domestically for over three years, and it recently completed its first cross-border trade using its CBDC. This cross-border trade involved a purchase of 1 million barrels of oil. It's apparently not clear who the counterparty was. At first glance, you would think it was Russia. Upon closer inspection, however, you'll notice that the French companies have recently been testing regular payments with China. Probably nothing. Now, another Asian country that's been actively testing its CBDC is India. Digital rupee trials have been taking place for almost a year now, and what's fascinating is that the recent trials have focused on offline payments. This is fascinating, given that China and others are also focusing on offline payments. India is also reportedly starting to focus on cross-border CBDC payments, just like China. At the same time, India's central bank has been scrutinizing the crypto industry, calling stablecoins a threat to financial stability. Newsflash, but China has been doing the same. This is why it's strange that Hong Kong has been so pro-crypto. For those that are unfamiliar, the administrative state is, for all intents and purposes, a part of China. Hong Kong has been testing its CBDC technology with Ripple, but is reportedly not that interested in issuing a CBDC quite yet. Speaking of CBDC pilots, Thailand started its trial back in June. South Korea has started its CBDC pilot just last month, and Kazakhstan started its one just a few days ago. It seems they're on track to go fully live by 2030. Come to think of it, this seems to be the case for most countries. And this makes sense, given that this is when the UN Sustainable Development Goals are due. More about that in the description. Now, an often forgotten region near Asia is Oceania. But in the case of CBDCs, it's hard not to miss. That's because Australia seems to be on the cutting edge of controlling its population. To that end, it's been rushing to roll out CBDCs. It hasn't started any trials, but it's already thinking about tokenization. If you watched our video about the financial system that central banks want to see, you'll know that they all involve tokenizing every asset you own on a blockchain controlled by the central banks. What this means is that you would technically own nothing and the central bank would own it all. Sound familiar? Anywho, out here in the Middle East, we've only seen a few CBDC developments over the last couple of months. In March, the UAE signed a deal for its CBDC strategy, which it revealed back in February. The first phase of the UAE CBDC trials are expected to be complete by mid-2024. And in April, Israel's central bank revealed the conditions under which it would issue a digital shekel. What's spooky is that one of the conditions was widespread stablecoin adoption. This echoes what the central banks of Indonesia said two years ago. CBDCs are a tool to combat Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Next door in Africa, meanwhile, there have been many CBDC developments over the last few months, mostly from Nigeria. As I mentioned earlier, the central bank there tried to restrict cash use to force the adoption of the e-Naira in March, and reportedly, it worked. Since that time, it's been trying to improve its e-Naira. For instance, in May, the Nigerian central bank added NFC payment functionality, making it possible to pay an e-Naira at regular payment terminals. As another fun fact, the reason why governments are so obsessed with QR codes is because they're more compatible with CBDC payments and fast payment systems. Now, while Nigeria has been trying to strong arm its citizens into adopting its CBDC, Kenya has apparently scrapped its plans to issue a CBDC anytime soon. This was revealed back in June. Kenya Central Bank noted that existing technologies could address its payment issues just as effectively. 
Note that this is true everywhere, and it just underscores the fact that CBDCs are only about control. Zimbabwe's CBDC, however, is on another level. Back in April, its central bank announced that it would be issuing a gold backed token that could be used for payments. This wasn't taken too seriously at the time, probably because there have been countless reports of gold backed currencies lately. Believe it or not, but the Bank of Zimbabwe delivered. Last month, it officially launched the token dubbed Zimbabwe Gold. Each token is backed by gold reserves held at Zimbabwe's central bank. Now, don't get too excited though. They can't be redeemed for gold, only for US dollars. No surprises there. This brings me to the big question, and that's which currencies are not issuing or outright resisting CBDCs? Besides the ones that have already been mentioned, like certain US states, Hungary, and Kenya, Finland, Denmark, Haiti, Ecuador, and the Philippines have opted not to move forward with CBDCs at this time. The bigger question is which countries will embrace CBDCs? As we've seen with countries like Nigeria, rolling out a CBDC doesn't guarantee its adoption. And even when you force its adoption, you can't force regular people to actively use it. Look no further than China's digital yuan for evidence of that. As it so happens, a global survey about people's attitudes towards CBDCs was conducted back in June. The results can be seen here. Americans, Canadians, Brits, and Europeans are the least keen to adopt CBDCs, probably because they're informed enough to know what they're really going to be used for. Notably, there is a large divergence between developed and developing markets. Only 30% of people in developed markets support the launch of a CBDC, whereas more than 60% of people in developing markets support the launch of a CBDC. This could again be consequence of being informed. The more alarming divergence is the ones between what citizens want and what their governments want. Recall that Spain has been one of the European countries pushing the hardest for a CBDC. Well, a recent survey found that 65% of Spaniards do not want a digital euro. The same is true in Russia, where the central bank and the government are rushing to roll out a CBDC, while an August survey found that only 17% of Russians said they would be comfortable keeping more than $200 in digital rubles. Lo and behold, the number one reason was because they don't understand it. Indeed, it's going to be really hard for central banks and governments to explain why their citizens need to start using a CBDC. That's why it's likely they'll use a crisis to roll out its adoption. This is something that's been alluded to in many CBDC reports and was almost tried during the pandemic. But you'll remember there's one critical piece of infrastructure that's missing, digital IDs. Our research suggests that these will need to be rolled out before CBDCs. And this makes sense given that central banks and governments need to keep track of who they're sending stimulus money to and such. Central banks and governments also need to make sure that CBDCs are sufficiently battle tested. Cyber attacks have been a number one concern for these institutions. And there is no question that a technical issue of any kind would instantly kill any confidence in CBDCs. In practical terms, this means that it's probably going to be a while before we see widespread CBC adoption. In the interim, alternative systems like cryptocurrencies will continue to be developed, and the average person will become more aware of the differences between these two digital currency systems. If you still don't understand these differences, be sure to check out the link in the description. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you found it informative, be sure to smash that like button and let us know. If you want to stay informed, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you want to help inform others, take a second to share this video with them. If you happen to be into crypto, then you need to check out the Coin Bureau Deals page. It's got trading fee discounts of up to 60% and sign up bonuses of up to $40,000 on some of the best crypto exchanges. 
It even has discounts on the best hardware wallets. The link is going to be down in the description. Well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again soon.